This is Twit. So, uh, the continuing saga of Windows VBA macros as yet another example of one of Microsoft's very poor early design decisions not aging well and their refusal for many years not to simply do the right thing. We have the continuing saga and drama of Windows VBA macros. Last Wednesday night. Okay, now wait a Mike, minute. Now, when I left, <laughs> this was all resolved. <laughs> no. No. Okay. No. All right. Last Wednesday night, they confirmed... Microsoft confirmed that it was resuming the rollout of their plan, which they first announced earlier this year, back in February, which is when we threw the party. But then, you know, that announcement back then was greeted with great relief by everyone who understood what it would mean for the security of Microsoft's much abused Office documents. After years of head in the sand policy, Microsoft would finally be blocking the execution of remotely received VBA macros by default across most Office apps. Predictably, this would break some things, which of course explains Microsoft's reticence to do the right thing sooner. We've never really talked about the pushback against this change, but I came across some interesting bits which address that. Even though Microsoft declined to provide information about why the effort had been paused, several experts said customers complained about this new, well, this change. It's not really a new feature. It's a change. Michael Tal, the technical director for Votero, which is a company specializing in malicious content filtering in the cloud, he told the record that he works closely with partners in the banking and financial sectors and explained that macros play, quote, an integral part of our clients' business workflows. He said that the initial block caused a massive hindrance on business productivity. Basically, the recession was that we're heading into was caused by Microsoft's decision. No. Okay. So what happened was that something changed. Just as Microsoft warned everyone it was going to back in February when they said to get prepared. They, they told everybody in February, we're going to do this. So everybody should like do what you need to. Because macros are going to start running, are going to stop running by default the way they have been. Well, guess what? It turns out Microsoft wasn't kidding. Michael Tal explained. He said, macros are a powerful tool in the financial sector as they are used to create robust financial modeling, calculate loan interest, automate repetitive labor-intensive tasks. Their, rec their recorded sets of actions which could be run to save time and labor. It's also used to simplify budget forecasting and makes a difference in a day-to-day -day workload of any entity who's using it as it speeds up the process to generate a task after finalizing the creation of the macro and setting the variables. Yeah, right. And you're going to have to now push a button to make that happen rather than not. <laughs> anyway, he added that while he understood... Microsoft's desire to combat malware like Emotet, TrickBot, QBot, and Drydex, you know, they should have come up with a more creative approach. <laughs> so he's complaining, right, about increased security, a more creative approach to deal with legitimate business use cases for macros and allow for continuity without compromising security. Uh, okay, so, you know, it's not as if macros have been stripped out of office tools no. and are gone. No, no, no. They it's simply... Just property now. It's yes, they simply no longer run without provocation. You just need to click a button to explicitly permit their use. And, you know... 
As we've seen, you showed two weeks ago, Leo, that flow chart. I have it in the show notes here again. We've seen that crazy flow chart that enterprise-wide group policy settings can be made to cause it to, like, no behavior change. Decision box 4A in the flow chart is cloud policy to block. Yeah. You set it to no. Then decision box 4B gets control, which is titled ADMX or group policy to block. That could be used to enable macros at that point. So behavior doesn't change. It's just really a question whether you want to fail secure or fail insecure, right? Right. What the default a is. Exactly. And and so basically everybody all everybody's having a conniption because they want the insecurity of allowing unsolicited, unsigned documents of unknown provenance to be received by email or clicked on through on a web page and just have everything work at the same time they want microsoft to somehow magically not allow malware to do the same thing well folks sorry about that but you know i mean if all they all the enterprises would have to do if they wanted that was to sign yeah. the document yeah. signet signing them is another There's way all of immediately of yeah yes this is a this is a decision tree where most of the outputs of the tree are macros enabled there's only one red box that had them blocked by policy and M Microsoft added one at the end. If you get through step after step after step after step after step, there are five steps and you still haven't reached a decision. It used to just be, okay, fine, let's go. Now it's okay. Wait a minute. Yeah. Let's let, let's make sure this is what you want. Are you absolutely sure? And that was too much to ask. Of, so often, of, security takes a back seat to the stupidest user, right? Yes. <laughs> and unfortunately... The lowest common denominator. That's the guy in the corner office. And because he signs the checks, he's the guy who gets to say to the IT guys, I don't like this behavior, Simmons. And, <laughs> you know, so how can any moron think that it's a good idea to allow macros to run unbidden in a document received through email. Well, you have to press I mean, the allow button. Come on. It's not, <laughs> it's not completely <laughs> unbidden. You have to invo you have to say its name three times. Uh Leo, I, again, it's just I mean so so you know, I get it yeah. that yeah. that Microsoft doesn't want to off offend or upset or ruffle any feathers these people should just be ignored i mean microsoft warned the industry the world in february this was coming it finally happened and and so oh my god you know it's the end of life as we've known it because our macros don't run themselves so what's any the longer. current status because it's been back and forth and back and forth the current status is, quote, this is what they said, we're resuming the rollout of this change in current channel. Based on our review of Good. customer feedback, we've made updates to both our end user and our IT admin documentation to make clearer what options you have Good. For different scenarios, so get off your butt. Set the group policy if you want it to be different. If but you want we're it to, be, if you default if you insist, secure. Yes, exactly. If you if you insist on allowing all the malware, you know, Folina used Office macros in May to infect a whole bunch of people. And if you want to be, you know, admissive of all of this malware by all means we just you know set your document policies <laughs> set group policy but the rest of us have decided okay 
it's an inconvenience. We're going to have to actually act a little more securely. Uh, fine. Good. I actually think signing Damn. signing the macros yes. is a great idea. That's a win. Yeah. Just, just you, you, you. Somebody is building these documents that has all this financial, you know, tricky financial stuff in it. Just have give them a certificate. Yeah. Have them sign it, and yeah. then it'll it'll just it's like moves like grease through a goose. Not a problem.